Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Formotion. Today, another low cap gem in my opinion, which I'll hold in my portfolio. I just bought around $4,000 worth of this coin and I'm planning to DCA more into this because this is a way too obvious play for the people that feel like, oh, here we go. No, this is not sponsored. This is not shill. This is not nothing. I wish though, but I would like to talk about the lower caps with low risk as well, relative of course, that I hold in my portfolio for the coming bull run. Now, at the moment of recording, Bitcoin is doing quite nice. If we do take a look at Bitcoin itself, we can have a better understanding. We are sitting at $47,200 at the moment of recording, but we already touched $48,200. So we are definitely showing some strength right here. Now, can we see lower mid 50 give or take uh, yeah we could definitely probably someday um and way higher than that however altcoins are not really following because hey the bitcoin dominance is going up as well so yeah altcoins are going up a little bit but they are lagging behind uh, quite hard therefore it's good to now still look at altcoins if we do take a look at bitcoin big ass spike almost a new high the collective altcoin market also sitting there but still has some room to go before we finally get there and that's just a breakout from the point where we are right now if we do take a look at this in perspective it's like still even if we do something like this right it would be considered sideways Right? And I guess that we will hover around a bit. Now, in that sideways accumulation period, which we at max have eight months, in my opinion, we have to look at the best coins. And if I look at the coins that I hold, they are quality, um, but they're also pumping. Right? I have Superverse, for example, but it's already quite high cap. But still who gives a shit it this week had a pump of 50 percent 50 percent crazy but i also hold imx one of my biggest bags imx is making new highs right here it, it it broke out of this range completely it never even retested it right beam is a very good coin that i think has a bright future and still in this range by the way um so far even it is just like mm, yeah okay whatever the fuck it might break out of this range right now but in this range here and here it's still sitting there so it's still good uh, good accumulation I, I i gave a spoiler on my twitter by the way that avax is way too obvious because off the grid is releasing off the grid is the first crypto well the first web 3 game that's going to release on xbox and off the grid shows crypto like hey look this is how you get mainstream it's a one big fucking hit already and although it might be a little hard to you know join that sale since you had to i don't know buy godzilla notes we have godzilla notes with web3 wills but if you are not able to get those then you want to feel like okay if off the grid is gonna let crypto gaming explode in the mainstream where do we have to invest the chain that it's built on and that's avax um, and avax is definitely showing strength when you look how it came from the bottom around eight dollars it's now sitting at 38 is that too late i don't know man solana also came from eight dollars and it's now sitting at 107 uh, so you tell me now there are a lot of projects in here that i really like um what i like most are lunch pads right because like for example cdify if you if you for example invest in a falcon forged how do you make money well by buying here and selling here right by buying low and selling high okay but what if you do not want to sell yet because hey the bull market is yet to really happen then you want to take a look at like, okay, how can I join new projects? You can do that through Launchpads by participating in new lunches. And CDFI is one of those examples, right? You buy CDFI tokens, you stake them, and you will be liable to participate in new lunches that happen on CDFI. Easy peasy, um, made a lot of money with that. And in a bull market, this will make me fucking rich, I think. But cdfi already has a quite high market cap and for you what i mean by quite high i um, not saying that it can't go higher but it's already now sitting at a 180 million dollar market cap 
although you pay for quality, sometimes people just want to pay less, right? And that's understandable. So where else to look? Because if you go into the lower cap list, yeah, you get more high risk. That's true. But lunch pads that are proving themselves, for example, we talked about this before chain GPT, um, $74 million market cap. Man, I talked about this before this project released and it's now sitting at a 20X already from the IDO price. Incredible. We made so much money on this if you joined the IDO, right? But also 30 or $74 million market cap. What the fuck? There's another lunch pad. I mean, there are, what the fuck is this? I wish I got this one. <laughs> okay, weird. Um, but there are a lot of lunch pads with our, which are super low cap, but you know, they are extremely high risk. Like you have all these specific lunch pads like Ada Pet or, or something like that, right? And it has a $4 million market cap. But then again, it, it, it doesn't really do shit, but everything pumps in, in lunch pad season, basically. But fuck Ada Pet because who's building on Cardano anyway? And, you know, I, I don't like it. One lunch pad is too obvious because lunch pads are a big hype. What else is a hype? Crypto gaming. So, you know, you have these lunch pads. They are called like starter, right? Engine starter and, and, and bull starter. But then you have to combine it with gaming. So game starter. Wait. Mm -hmm. Here. Game starter. This was way too stupid. Game starter. This is a uh, lunch pad that I just invested in at this price, by the way. S do we, uh, is, Did I buy the low? Fuck no. Look at this. Look at where it came from. It came from two cents. I bought at 20. Okay, about 10 times as high. I don't care. It now finally showed us that it survived, right? It survived. A lot of projects here died off, right? This one showed us like, hey, 10x. So we did not die. Otherwise, you wouldn't do a 10x, right? Did even more. Um, once If it gets back down here, I'm going to stack the fuck up on this one. Why? Because this is a gaming lunch pad with good allocations, a decent refund policy, good tokenomics, right? Fully diluted, it's just $22 million as well. Um, good lunches, and it's low cap, and it combines crypto gaming. Did I already say that? It has a lot. It has a lot, right? So this is one of the, the, the low cap gems that I put in my portfolio, not even to really participate in their lunches necessarily. Yeah, I do, but to make an easy 10X when the bull market happens, right? Again, $7 million market cap, okay? Now look at Cedify in the last bull market when Cedify was the top crypto gaming lunch pad while crypto gaming wasn't even that great, right? You had only shit games out there. What was the all time high? 300 and like, what was it? $30 million market cap. This is now seven, right? So 330 divided by seven gives you a 47X to do what Cedify did in the last bull market. Well, I think this bull market will be way better for lunch pads and gaming. So can we potentially get a 50X out of this? Yes. I'm not saying it will, but hey, if it happened last bull market and this bull market is only gonna get bigger, then yeah, it could be possible. Of course, do your research, blah, blah, blah. Don't sue me, fuck off. You know how that works. Um, but I, I, I must say, I like GameStarter really a lot, man. Um, they just released a couple of projects that did quite well, to be honest. And uh, yeah, we can take a look at those projects because I honestly think that if they just have, have a couple of, uh, of lunches that are like decent... Then, then they will do well, okay? So let's take a look at the projects that they uh, have released. Um, you go to Gamepad right here, and you can see uh, released, right? They released Icon X. Okay, that one went to shit. Like, that was a fucked up lunch, but Engine Starter also had it. Doesn't Didn't do well. They had Web3 War. Pretty 
good one. Hive did pretty well eventually. Prism uh, by Rainmaker. I like that one. Uh, Game GPT still has to, you know, uh, get there really, but it will get there, right? And you will see if you look in this list that there are a lot of projects that you might know about, okay? These are a lot of projects that you know released back like Creo Engine that blew up eventually, but no one excels you like Exiles, by the way. I don't know. Also released on Cedify. They release, 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 release. And during the bear market, they just kept on doing that. And nobody gave a fuck, of course. But now in the bull market, it's going to get way more interesting. So they now have bit rifles and pixel picks coming up. So I don't know about these projects in specific, but I know that GameStarter does it quite well. Now, what I also like is how much you can allocate um, to these lunches. Right? A lot of lunch pads say, yeah, you have to invest uh, $50,000 in our token, and then you get a $200 allocation. And that's normal, right? Game starter, you still get a very high allocation because it is a fucking high risk lunch pad. Okay, high risk lunch pad. Because nobody participates there. Therefore, you get all the allocations. Uh, right? So if you're the only one, yeah, you take a huge amount of risk. But once you know lunch pad season comes up again and and everything starts picking up yeah you can already be there so let's take a look at the medium article for one of the latest lunches prism um how it worked well you first have the the vip round basically and that's where people with the most amount of tokens they get into the vip round they get to buy first and whatever's left goes to the private round and then it goes to the public round right but the VIP round sounds like, well, VIP, you have to be very important, pineapple, and, and, and it's not affordable. It's not that bad. It's definitely not that bad. It's open to game stakers only, so you have to stake your game tokens, okay. It's first come, first serve, okay, okay, fair enough as well. Minimum amount of game to be staked is 13,000. Hey, wait, 13,000? That's three thousand dollars. Okay, that's doable. You know, if you compare this to what you have to pay at other lunch pads, what do you get in return? Max ticket size is ten k. Whoa! So for just taking three thousand dollars worth of this token, you got an allocation of ten thousand dollars. So if one of these projects does a fucking ass bearish. 2x you can already cover three unlimited vip accounts that's kind of what you get right so therefore it is like super out of control right and i don't think that these kind of numbers are sustainable um because if 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 they are going to raise like uh for example what were they raising right here one hundred and fifty thousand dollars right so this means that actually just 15 people can fill up the complete pool that seems like super ridiculous and super unfair and not sustainable in any way right so what would happen is that probably they have to raise the amounts raised, but also the ticket sizes will go down in the future, right? You can invest, like in the last couple of races, it was just like 4K, right? But also, if people find out, hey, put 3K in, have all the tokens that they need, and they go, right? Now, again, like this is now sitting at a $7 million market cap, of course. Once this project goes to a normal valuation, and let's say it goes to 70 million, right? Then you have to pay 30k to get that. And then it's gonna get a lot harder and a lot more realistic compared to other lunch pads. And even that would be cheap. 30k to have an allocation of 10k. Right? That's fucking cheap. Usually your allocation, based on my experience, is a tenth of your total invested amount in the launchpad tokens. So for example, 
Um, if you invest like 100k in C defy tokens, you get around a 10k allocation, give or take. And sometimes that's not even the case, right? But okay, you know, this is super cheap. So, how does the refund policy actually work? Is there something to find out about that? So, they have a couple of rules, like any launchpad has, uh, like GameStarter will request a full amount of tokens allocated for the specific IDO to be sent to the launchpad 24 hours prior to the beginning of the token sale. That's more of an arrangement between, uh, between GameStarter and the uh, project that releases there. For you, the information, most important, basically, GameStarter will issue a refund to token buyers who are also game stakers in the case of the project having a partial token release which we call a vesting period and the and the if the okay they have to rewrite that and if the token price drops below 20 percent during the first seven days from the release and does not return to its initial price in 24 hours so if the token price drops below 20 percent um so do i have to read that like if the token releases at a dollar, like the IDO price is a dollar, it has to get to 20 cents and then you get a refund. Because that's like a lot of room to go down. But yeah, I looked it up, by the way, and it's if the token price drops 20% under this price, under the IDO price. So let's say this is 0 0.075 minus 20% is give or take uh, 6 cents. So if it drops below that. So that's actually also very good. So they have a good refund policy. The only thing is, like I said, the, 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 it's pretty hard to get into probably if people find out about this. And you have to be really quick because everybody gets a high allocation. Yeah. <laughs> That could be very beneficial if you are the one that gets into these sales. So, therefore, it's definitely in my uh, in my wallet. Like, if you look at the biggest lunch pads out there, we saw C Defy, um, but also if you look at Dow Maker, it's sitting at a two hundred and twenty million dollar market cap. If you look at Chain GPT, it was seventy eight or something like that. Um, Engine Starter is also one of the lower caps, but still. 32 million yeah and then you have game started with a 7 million right and i cannot understand why actually um so the only thing that i can imagine is well what i do want to mention also is that um uh, past ideas icos IDO launchpad ROI. Okay, so if you look over the last two years, for example, hey, why is CDFI so expensive? Well, even over the last two years, which was a bear market, right? CDFI had an average return of 118%. Okay, and GameStarter minus 17. And so it means that in, in a bear market, GameStarter, overall, if you participated in all their lunches you will be in a loss right because they haven't released the best projects however if you look at year to date you see game starter right here just for projects 220 percent in a bull market it is completely different completely different right so that's like therefore it's an obvious play I want to leave it there. I want to leave it there. Nobody cares in the bear market because there are no returns anyway. But hey, the bull market is going. It's it's right around. We can already see it, right? But it is still low cap. Yeah, I'm taking advantage of it as long as that's still the case. So I want to wrap it up right here. Let me know what you think. Um, if you also like the video, give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel. Turn the bell notification on. See you guys next time.